Hello and welcome. This video is about an instrument that I um, recently made. So it's oftentimes called a monochord. Um, <clears throat> when I set out to design and make this, um, I searched online and I found some videos where people show how they make the instrument, but uh, none really about uh, other design aspects, about like how do you calculate the springs, um, what kind of strings to use. So this video is more about that. Also, um, contrary to most uh, monochords that you find online, um, they typically they have a sound box, so they have a hollow box um, with holes in it to amplify the sound. And this one doesn't. It is just a solid block of ma mahogany in this case. It's uh, two centimeters uh, thick and uh, 30 centimeters wide and 108 centimeters long. Um, it has tuning pins from Zether, Zether tuning pins. They are um, five millimeter diameter. And their length, length was such that they are a little bit, the threading part is a little bit longer than the thickness of the board. So I had to put some uh, legs underneath it. Um, to allow the pins to not stick out at the bottom. And then so on one side there are these tuning pins, on the other side, which I show in more detail later, is uh, just screws. <clears throat> and so there's a uh, 27 strings. They are um, in a tambura tuning. So tambura is an Indian instrument and they typically have a tuning of uh, um, A and D and then the next octave D if I remember correctly. So this one is tuned to G. So there's a G and a D string. Actually it's not the, the G that's the naming that we use in Western um, convention, so this is purely a hertz frequency, but it's very close to a G. So there's one very low string, G1, G2, G3, and in between as a D. So those are the, the only three strings that uh, are, are on here. And then they repeat. So the pattern repeats. So there's a section of four strings, four strings, four strings. <coughs> I'll show it more in detail. So here you see the, the tuning pins and these beads, these are uh, fine tuning devices. So that's one of the other things that was very difficult to find information about. But you see here this piece, if I can focus it, this piece of wood is like on, it has a slight curve to it. So the string going from one end to the bridge, if it would go in a straight line, it would go well, in a straight line. But the, the beats force it to go in a curve. So by moving the beats, basically you uh, change the length 
and the tension of the string very slightly and more um, fine, more precise than by just using the, the tuning pins. So these pins, they work by rotating them. And by rotating them, you just wind the string a little more or less. And by doing so, you change the length and the tension on the string. And that determines the, um, the sound that comes out. And so it's not just the length of the string, but also the diameter that determines which uh, tone it will produce. And so that was the other thing that was difficult to do, is to calculate the correct string diameter. And I finally did it by just comparing information about other strings that I found online and just get a sense of the typical tension in different instruments. And it ranges between, let's say, 5 and 15 kilogram string tension. And this, this instrument was designed to be about 10 kilograms tension. So that's how I calculated the uh, desired diameter because the string length is 90 centimeters. So then that is determined from this bridge. So this is a bridge where the string is moving over to this bridge. So the distance between that, that's the string vibrating length and the frequency of the, the tone that's being produced is uh, corresponds to the, the length, the square of the length, the, di the square of the diameter, and the, the type, the density of the, the type of string. So in this type case, I'm using steel strings. The higher frequencies They are thin, so in this case 0 0.016 16 inch. I also have a few that are 0 0.014 inch, so very close. That's just because uh, I bought them in sets of 12 and I didn't have enough um, with one set, so I combined two sets for the higher frequency. And then the two lowest, so the very lowest, which is um, this one. That's a wound string. I don't know if it will focus. Come on. But so that's a, a winding around the string to make it heavier. And the second one also. And the other ones are just plain strings. See the, the lighter color, that's a plain string. And the more bronze color, that's a wound string. And, and let's see. So the other idea was I wanted to see if I could make um, like a sitar type um, resonating strings. And so that's why here across the instruments there are nine strings, strings um, that have their tuning pins on the side. And then this bridge was supposed to uh, resonate when the board resonates because of uh, due to the playing of these strings and it was supposed to activate the cross strings and 
Well, I don't know if it is happening, but I, I don't hear it. So if you are um, thinking of designing something like this, then uh, this is just over-engineered and uh, not worth the effort, I would say. But anyway, those strings, they go around here and they are screws are on the bottom. Um, that's the design I did, just to have maximum string length right there. And, uh, let's see. So the other thing is, but that's very difficult to see. My camera is not focusing. But this bridge... You can see oh, why it's not focusing. You can see it has the contact is towards the end here, and then it has a slight curvature going down, and that is also mimicking um, Indian instruments to create this buzzing effect. And I think it's slightly there. I I only wanted a very um, um, small effect so that's why uh, it's only a small it's only a small bridge but i don't don't really hear it so that might be over engineered as well anyway this is a hardwood it's a, a, a piece of scrap wood that I had lying around and as you can see here the strings that I used they are they had a um, a loop end and that made it really easy to attach them instead of uh, buying a roll a big roll and then you have to cut them yourself and this was I found a, a better solution and the strings, they come, like I said, they come in packs of 12 and they are slightly longer than what I needed. So that was also perfect. So I just had to cut off maybe this piece at the end to, to make it work. And let's see. So did I say the distance between the strings is one centimeter that uh, I found to be a, a reasonable uh, amount to allow for the string to vibrate, especially when you um, string struck it here in the middle. So especially the lower ones, they don't want it to hit each other. So one centimeter distance between them, and then these beads. These are stone beads. <clears throat> they are also one centimeter in diameter. <clears throat> and then the design. Okay, if I can focus it again. Design is such that the distance here between the top here and the top of the this metal rod, this is just a uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch steel rod, is exactly the same as the distance half the diameter of this bead. And then it goes, this piece of wood curves down. I don't know why it has difficulty focusing, but this curves down slightly. And like I said, it's not a straight line, but it's a curve to allow, when moving the bead, the, the tension in the string is slightly modified. Let's see. So did I say it's a mahogany part? Yes, I think I did. The, these pieces of wood, like this one, 
and underneath the bridges I don't know what it was but they are they're also hardwoods um, and the legs are poplar so that can be a, a cheaper one cheaper wood let's see so I think I said everything I wanted to say um, quick look at my sound healing setup and I'll probably make a, a separate video with some sounding